Hosanna, crucify, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. A few years ago when I was serving as rector of Christ Church in Newton, New Jersey in this diocese, uh, we were just a couple of years shy of our 250th anniversary. And I found myself at the customer care counter of Lowe's Hardware Store in Hampton, applying for a church credit card. It was a business account. As I approached the counter, I noticed that the uh, woman behind the desk, a millennial, had uh, multiple piercings and was covered with tattoos. Now, I have no judgment for people that adorn themselves in this manner. I'm not uh, being critical. It was just an observation. I'm thinking as I approach her, she is definitely not going to get my humor. <laughs> I would be correct. I'm dressed in black, I've got my white collar on, and she starts typing the info into the computer. And she asks me the first question. She says, years in business? <laughs> and I say, 2000. <laughs> she doesn't crack a smile, I mean nothing, just crickets, you know? So I said, well, well actually, my particular parish is 248 years old. So she goes, the computer won't take that. <laughs> so I said, we'll try 60. That's okay. <laughs> then she asked me this, does your business have any branches? <laughs> and I said to her, our business has got lots of branches. I mean, they're like everywhere. There are millions of branches. <laughs> Actually, I didn't say that, I was too smart. I said, no. <laughs> Today is a big day for Christ Church here in Short Hills and all its affiliates throughout the world. All of the branches across the world, churches everywhere marching on this day, just as we did around the church in procession. The Jesus movement today on Palm Sunday moves. And we have our sights set on Jerusalem, just as Jesus did, laying siege on the center of wealth, power, and religion. It's called by our tradition in the prayer book, um, the triumphal entry. That's a bit much, folks. Hardly so. A bunch of, of country bumpkins from Galilee. You know, we had a little bit of that in the, in the uh, portico where the woman says, we know that you are with him because of your accent. It betrays you. They talked funny, those Galileans that came down for Jesus' peasant entry. There were all kinds of hangers-on, perhaps, and misfits, making a runner, not out of a red carpet for the king of kings. Instead, it was made of peasant cloaks, the rather dingy carpet. And, and, and just to drive the point home, Jesus selects for his magisterial debut in the capital of all, time, of all places. He comes riding in, as the other gospels say, on an ass. My two sons always loved when I preached on Palm Sunday. <laughs> oh, daddy said it in church. <laughs> on a donkey, okay? <laughs> That's what I mean. Contrast Jesus this morning and what we heard in the gospel 
with the typical Roman imperial entry. You know, stallions all about power, swords, armament, shining breastplates, foot soldiers and, and brass instruments, a raw demonstration of occupying military power. Everybody got the message. You dare not come up against us. Do you see what Jesus is doing here this morning? What's happening here? He's mocking them. This is a street theater. It's a satire, a lampooning of Roman hubris. Oh, look at me, I'm Caesar. <laughs> a direct challenge to the kingdoms of this world that place all of their confidence in weapons and violence. And an assertion of the kingdom of God. Today we walk as the other armies through so many centuries did. We walk towards Jerusalem and we join the Assyrians and the Babylonians and the Persians and the Greeks. They all walked to Jerusalem just as we walked. And we like them are fully armed we're stocked with our own brand of Jesus ammo, ready to get this movement going. We are equipped for victory, and we are ready to take over the world. And our armaments are pieces of palm, some folded into crosses. <laughs> we fight with with altar linens and descants from the choir and food for hungry people. It's all ready to be deployed, uh, launched on this Jesus miss mission upon the needy of the world. We're prepared to invade with musical notes and with prayers for justice and peace. The politicians and armies of this world don't stand a chance. They never have. I've been uh, in Short Hills since September with you, having a blast. I love you guys. And I have not seen one single building anywhere near here dedicated to Pontius Pilate. <laughs> they lost. <laughs> but to our peaceful king, there are signs of Jesus like everywhere, all over the place. We started with our shouts of Hosanna. It's a curious mashup word of Hebrew and Aramaic. It means like, uh, save us, <laughs> or even something like, um, saving has already started. It's coming right now in this moment. You've showed up, so it's, salvation has has arrived and clearly the people who were shouting that out as they made their way to the city um, expected that that entrance into Jerusalem was the saving act. But we, we know better. We know that it's what happens this weekend that saves us, the dying and the rising. Holy Week begins now. And we, we survey this, this clash of themes right here in this, in this space. We look at this rather pathetic entry and Jesus' defeat on the cross. Look at what we did to him. Look at what he did for us. And we are the crowd that turns on him. On Sunday, we hail him. By Friday, it's away with him, away with him. Crucify him. A crowd can really turn on you. Sunday, he's our hero. But by Friday, the crowd is out for blood. And that's exactly what we got the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.